Now we're here at the end of February and I'm excited this year because, you know, we live up north. You know, I've lived up in the UP of Michigan uh, in the past where we averaged 185 inches of snow in Munising. And uh, so you're used to snow, you, you know, if you live there, you can't complain about it because you choose to live there. But man, it's so nice where it's the end of February right here and it's like this, you know, it's 50 degrees today. Everything's dry. We're gonna have, I'm sure we'll be planning earlier and you can imagine with us, we wanna get out here and do our deer chores, get things done. But I'm already thinking about summer buck management, but it's not just summer buck management. I use that as you're looking at the summer, managing a certain way, but it applies to the, your entire year and actually managing the bucks. And you talk about bucks, and the reason we talk about bucks is they're the lowest hole in the bucket. And you have to plug that first and everything else follows. Um, that's where like if you manage for does, does are easy. Put a bunch of food out, put a bunch of cover on your land, go find that on public land, you're gonna find a bunch of uh, does and fawns. Uh, young bucks aren't that much further behind, but the limiting number is the bucks and increasing bucks. And so when you look at the overall management of bucks and what you need on your property to actually explode a buck herd, to have a buck herd, you really need to set your sights on the future and understand not only how to have more bucks on your property, but how to make sure that you don't limit the number of bucks on your property. This is a good example right here. This is a four and a half acre food plot. This little corner behind me, less than a quarter acre. In fact, you look at it, it's probably about an eighth of an acre at the most, might be a more of a 10th of an acre. This is our little clover corner. We'll have a pop-up right over here in the future for turkey hunting and um, it'll be beautiful. We, they roost all around here in these hardwoods. That's one of the reasons we don't want to cut these hardwoods. Plus they're our approach over there. So we're not spooking deer, but this is just a small corner of this entire four and a half acre field. We planted our uh, dual threat 365 here and we'll refresh the uh, clover, just a little frost seeding and uh, make sure it's a nice thick stand in here. That's something the deer can hit all summer long, but it's a very small percentage. Out of our entire 17 and a half acres of food plots here, we have about an acre and a half total of clover just on small hunting plots. There's actually a, a stand right over there in the corner and we can slip in here after daylight, switch grass all around this, and then we can go sit in that stand blower sent off the hill. I had a great sit there last year like that. And we can watch this little food plot here. It's a little opening. Critical that you're not attracting a bunch of deer during the summertime. You know, the number one way to destroy your property in most locations, unless you're trying to build a herd, is to have summer food. Now there's exceptions. Um, I know areas where they're surrounded by ag land, area or very little for a mile in any direction. Well, you can do a lot of thing wrong, things wrong on a property like that and still get it right when it comes to hunting and building a good herd because you don't have to think about the herd complexity of when bucks are there, when does are there, if you're attracting too many does at the wrong time. Give you the opposite. You're in a mixed area like this where you have woods, fields, ag, ag land and I'm thinking of a client property in particular, it has 60 to 80 acres. They have a big food plot top in the center of about 12 acres of edge and food plot. I, I almost get to the point of being adamant with clients that this is your problem, this is what you need to do. And if there's a little hesitation on their part, I try to hit it pretty hard because I'm not going to a client property to tell you what you wanna hear. I'm going to your property based on going to 1,500 other properties over the last 20 seasons of designing property in 26 states and telling you what I've learned on other people's property based on experience. Not what I've seen happen in some little corner of the property or corner of the world or corner of the region, state, whatever, but what I've seen as a whole and how that relates to deer hunting and habitat and properties everywhere. So I go to this client in particular and the big problem they had was they're working on the habitat, they're working on the bedding areas, and they've done that. They've relocated access trails, but they still, that 12 acres of food, they have eight acres of beans, they have a couple acres of corn, and they have a couple acres of clover. Now, for a lot of you, they look at it like, wow, it's a perfect combination. The problem is, is they're seeing 25 to 30 does on a, on a random October, November afternoon, evening, right before dark, and with all those does in a small area, they're really hurting and shooting themselves in the foot for bucks during the hunting season. 
No, a bunch of does doesn't attract bucks. Now again, if you're surrounded by ag land, you have a chunk of cover in the middle, it doesn't matter if it's 100 acres, 20 acres, then you, can, you have to stuff all those deer or else they're gonna go during the summertime. So someone in that setting would look at it and say, well, we have bucks here all, all year long and it doesn't hurt anything. It's because there's no other cover. You have to understand the why everywhere you go. But when it comes into most mixed areas, and if you're not trying to build a herd, meaning in the UP of Michigan where we're at, we relied on clover rotation. So we'd have 100% of our fields in clover during the, during the uh, summer. And then we'd rotate in cool season annuals and do at least 50%, sometimes 75% of all our food plots with a clover base so that clover came back the following year, but we had a cool season annual that we used in an attraction. We were building a herd. We were attracting more deer. We didn't have any deer. We had one spike the first year in 99 when we bought the property. We had one rub, one scrape, and a few pictures of a spike, and that was it. You could walk the sand trails for two and a half miles over a five to 10 day period after a big rain and not see any deer tracks during the summer. There just weren't any there. So that's a different, different story. But for most of you, and especially that client I'm talking to, when they have all that summer food, it attracts a pile of does and fawns. You have great cover, which means great fawning cover, high stem count, switchgrass edges, hinge cuts and cuttings in the woods, timber harvest. Those does and fawns that are here today are here to stay. And as soon as any kind of green that pops up in the fall is there, they hammer it. Now people will say, well, there's a lot of does during the summertime, a lot of does in the fall, that equals a lot of bucks, wrong. Because what ends up happening is with all those does in the summertime, they take up space. There's no space left over for bucks. Bucks, mature bucks don't bed between those does that are bedded and taking up a lot of space and their food source, they have to bed behind. Eventually they're bedding so far away that they're bedding on someone else's land. And when you're seeing 30 does and, and fawns and just half as many bucks during the season, that means someone else is seeing twice as many bucks as does and fawns. That's just the way it works. So the problem is, is during the rut, these bucks have gotten used to not living on your land because there's so many does and fawns. It could be the same as they're not living on your land because of hunting pressure too. And so you, you really exacerbate the problem when you have, I apologize for cutting in the video, I'll try to keep this 20 seconds or less, but we're thinking about planting and so is Lincoln at Packer Max. And right now he doesn't offer very many deals. It's $50 off. Check out the code WHS50, it's in the link in the description. Try them, great product, check it out, you won't be sorry. Exacerbate the problem when you have uh, land that you overpressure and you put a lot of summer food on, but just the summer food alone, if you have a lot of does going into the rut and those bucks have gotten used to August, September, October, living somewhere else for their fall property, why are they all of a sudden gonna relocate and come over to your land just for a bunch of does? They already have does where they're at. They can only breed one doe every five to seven days. They typically breed two to four does in the first primary rut and a couple during the second rut. So it doesn't matter if they have 10 times as many does in their area, they can only breed a handful of does each and every rut. So they don't wanna come over to an area where they've already established that we don't wanna be here because of all the does and fawns you have. Why are they all of a sudden gonna come from over a mile away, three quarters of a mile away, and just relocate to your land because you have a bunch of does? They already identified as a distressful area. They don't wanna be there. So what ends up happening during the rut in a case like that, and this is what I see on client properties often, is that those bucks don't even come during the rut, and you see half as many bucks as you do does during the entire season, and you're severely shooting yourself in the foot because you did it. You did it because you planted a bunch of summer food, you attracted all kinds of does, fawns. They just stay around, they take up space, they stress out mature bucks, the older he becomes, the less he wants to be around that. Not much different than, you know, my dad. He passed away when he was almost 82. He liked to have his quiet space. And it wasn't just around does and fawns, it was around the whole family when we we're playing games and being loud. He wanted to go relax. He wanted to have his crossword puzzle, take a nap. Nothing wrong with that. He wanted to go out for a drive by himself. He just wanted to get away. He'd like to be a little bit slower in his older age, nothing wrong with that. But think about those older bucks and how they do that too. So when you're setting up your land this year and you're looking at, boy, what can I do to get more bucks? It's not gonna be the quality of food you plant. It's not gonna be what, what you do with your habitat. It's certainly gonna be what you do with your hunt and how you sneak around your property and not spook deer. 
but it's also a, in large part going to do with if you have a lot of summer food on your property or not. This is how much we have out of four and a half acres in this entire area. I do this for a living. I sell food plot seed. I could tell you, hey, I got this magic bean planted on half this property out here and you're gonna have a whole bunch of bucks on your land. I could show you a bunch of pictures of grazing summer deer, sell more seed, make more money, but it's not right. I get paid first and foremost to be right and base those years, two decades of experience and looking at close to 1600 parcels, base that experience and deliver it to you. And this summer dough problem is a big problem. So when you're sitting back here, it's the end of February and March and we're planning out our season, we have to look at that balance. I wanna help you look at that balance and to that client I'm talking about and others like them. If they want to improve their hunt in the fall, you get rid of the does in the summer. You do that by not planting the summer food. It seems counterintuitive, I know, but it's the right thing to do if you want to build a great herd in a hunt. There's always the exception. And I know some of you out there are saying, but, but, but. However, folks don't understand what they have right in front of them because they don't have the experience of looking at other hundreds of properties in multiple states and applying that knowledge and experience back to their own world. That's why they have diversity in the workplace. If you just have this small little town of, of a small company, let's say it's even 50 employees, you never get any input from the outside, then you're gonna become stale. You need to actually grow and experience, bring that back, and it's no different than this dough problem, and I call it a dough factory, is a huge problem on your land. It's what's holding a lot of people back. Sit right now and look at what can we do different with our food plot program. If you have lots of does, the first step is not to shoot more, the first step is to eliminate summer food sources. Do that, what you find is those does and fawns start to spread out in other areas around you. They get exposed to other hunters. You drop your population in the area, not only on your own property, by getting rid of the summer food. Now you make more space for bucks going into the fall. A certain number of does and fawns will always come back in high number. We have does and fawns that hang around here all year long because we have good cover, good fawning cover but the food's out there. I don't want them right here because when this food starts popping in August, and we plant this in August, let alone the corn, the corn's there, we don't want them to hit it. But when our greens start popping in August, we don't want an army of does and fawns there. And that's another point of it too, is that by not having those does and fawns, now that food gets another five, six weeks of growth, we get more volume on it. So if you're having trouble making your food plots last in the hunting season, get rid of the does in the summertime. Now you get five, six weeks more of growth and that severely affects the amount of volume you can have taken into the hunting season. And that's, all, that's what it's all about, making sure you have that food lasting during the hunting season, limiting the number of does and fawns. And that's why in this property right here, but it's not just this property, but this property right here, we'll see about 25 does and fawns on our 17 and a half acres of food stretch from one corner to the other. But we routinely, every single year, get 40 to 45 different bucks on trail camera. That happened the very first year. We didn't do anything else other than change food plots, locations, access, locations of stand locations. We hunted it effectively, put the predator into the hunt. And here we had, that's why I almost didn't buy this property. I talk about it a lot, or I, I was a little hesitant. I wanted to know the why. So I come here and most of the 20 out of 25 pitchers were um, bucks and velvet. So 20 out of 25 pitchers were bucks and velvet. I want to know why. Nice bucks. Not much here during the hunting season. Start to look at it, I come out here, blinds on the food plots, lots of bean use. Beans are down in the dirt early October, just five acres of beans. I thought, you know what, we can change this this year, in, a, in, in the first year. Really easy to do it in one season because you just get rid of the summer food, plant fall food. We had a great herd, shot some monster bucks right off the first year. Bigger bucks than they'd shot the whole seven years owning it previously. And it was all about just changing the food over and that can be done in one season. But it hasn't just happened here. Uh, where we're at in Wisconsin, we shoot a high percentage of the target bucks in the area, not just on our property, each and every year. And we have done so for 10 years. We shot about 15 target bucks in that 10 year period over there. And we've never planted summer food. It's all fall 
food. And if we planted a bunch of summer food and beans and we had it out there and we had a high number of does and fawns, we wouldn't shoot those bucks that we have than we've shot in the past. UP of Michigan. As we reached our herd numbers, again, build, herd building mode, we add that summer food. As soon as we got our numbers up, we'd see 10 does and fawns, 12 at the most does and fawns on the annual basis. One year we had 17 different bucks, and this is going from no bucks, pass up 11, shoot two, so I had 13 in front of me out of those 17 bucks. And we do that by limiting the amount of summer food, carry more food over to the fall, and it's that times hundreds and hundreds when we look at these clients. So many people, because you want to do the, your best, so you plant a whole bunch of food, you, follow, you fall for the magic bean, you change the habitat, and all of a sudden you're overrun with does. You don't see the number of bucks you should. And I'll go back, I'll back up. The number of bucks you should see, now a reflective of a buck is their home range is six or seven times, five to seven times greater than a doe family group. So when you're seeing bucks and the number of bucks are reflective of a very large area where does could be just on your parcel or the parcel edges on your neighbors. So when you see that number of bucks, look at the number of does. Your number of bucks you see overall, again, reflective of a large area, should be about twice as many does and fawns you see. It's a quality habitat and hunting ratio, not a sex ratio. It's something I see over and over again the best properties are right around that range where you see about twice as many bucks during the season as you do does and fawns. When you're seeing half as many or even one to one, you've got a problem. And if you have summer food, you need to look no further. And that's how you can manage not only your buck herd for the summertime, but going throughout the fall, building a great herd, building a great hunt. And that's how you can look at your land and be very critical of yourself. If you have too many bucks during the summertime, if you have a lot of summer food, then you're in big trouble. It's really not going to spell out a lot of great success for the fall. And just by changing that food makeup, you could just explode your property into greatness for this season and beyond.